All right. Hello, folks. Um, today's Inktober prompt was climb. Couldn't really come up with anything too original. I decided I would draw um, Spider-Man. Um, just haven't really tried to draw Spider-Man in a while. So uh, that's my goal today. And uh, <coughs> I've mapped out a loose sketch here, but um, I don't know. I don't I don't love this sketch. Hello, Jesus. Welcome to the chat. Um, but, you know, maybe I can fix it in ink. <laughs> we'll see. So here we go. Hello, Chrissy. Thank you for joining. Oh, there we go. Forgot that I uh, zoomed in. Looks like some other folks joined. Hey, Keith. Hey, Ghost Dog. Nice to see you. You certainly have my regulars. <laughs> oh, cool. Glad to hear that you're drawing, Jesus. Uh, that, what, what anatomy book? Nintendo joins and says that he finished a Daft Punk Technologic Robot inking. That's cool. Hello, Sigamigs. Hello, Shirley. Look at that. Full room tonight. I'll have to remember to keep shifting uh, this pad so that I uh, keep the artwork framed up. I switch. Hello, Aldi. Yeah, I know. Stranger Things came out today. I haven't had um, any time to uh, sit down and watch it. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. I really enjoyed that show. So that's that's going to be cool when I have some time to sit down and start binging on that. Ah, a Marvel how-to book. That's cool. Sounds good. It's a little warm up here today, but uh, yeah, it's been a fairly productive day today. I uh, did some job hunting stuff. Um, I uh, did some work on the next Comic Tropes episode, and now I'm uh, working on this piece of artwork and getting to chat with all of you so not too bad of a day and uh, if I ever have some free time I'll get to see Stranger Things I'm looking forward to that let's see uh, oh Keith Thomas says I'm drawing Batman climbing a building side like the old 60s TV show that's a great idea great idea I wish I thought of it that's really really cool uh, Aldi says everything came out today Super Mario Odyssey Wolfenstein 2 and Assassin's Creed my poor wallet. Yeah, I, uh, I'd i love to get all those things. Definitely can't really uh, justify it right now. The, the only one I'm thinking uh, seriously about is maybe like Super Mario, but we'll see. Might have to wait. But that's the one I'm of those that I'm most interested in. Yeah. 
Sigamix asks, have you read Paper Girls? I have. Very good comic. I'm a big fan of um, Brian K. Vaughan. I think he's a tremendous writer. Um, I've really never been disappointed by anything he's written that I've read. So, uh, big fan. Um, and Cliff Chang is, is a terrific artist, no question. So, um, but yeah, Paper Girls is really interesting. It's a sci-fi that you probably haven't really seen done before. So I give that a recommend. I'm a little behind, though. I'm behind on uh, that and Saga because I don't like tend to get comics regularly. I just sort of binge on them in chunks. So um, need to catch up on that at some point. Uh, Keith Thomas said, saw Bailey J playing Mario on Twitch today. Chrissy, is Bailey J the, the one that you watch? Um, Jesus says, I haven't been in your streams often, mostly because of school. Well, school's important. That's, that's really cool. Hello, Lobo. Sigmig says, oh yeah, I finished Kill or Be Killed, Volume 2. Do you think Dylan is insane or the demon is real? That's the question, isn't it? Um... I tend to think he's he's insane, but there's a part of me that, that just isn't quite sure. It's, I don't know. They'll have to give us a definitive answer at some point, I figure, because uh, at some point, like, maybe the, the demon will give him information that you know, he himself could not have obtained, and then we know that he's real. But I don't know. I love that I can't decide for 100% certainty. Is that centered? Yeah. Um, have I read Sex Criminals? I actually haven't uh, read that one. I've heard that it's uh, I've heard that it's good. Um, I do like uh, Matt Fraction's work usually, so uh, I'm I have a lot of confidence that I would like it, but I haven't read it yet, so I really can't say. That fraction would be an interesting uh, person to discuss for an episode of Comic Tropes. I'll have to think about that. I think, I'm trying to think, uh, not this weekend, but I think next weekend, I think that there's a little Comic-Con uh, here in my town. So, uh... Maybe uh, maybe I'll be able to get some interesting footage for some comic tropes episode out of something like that. Hmm, it's just musing to myself aloud. We'll see. Uh, Nintendo says, I've heard of that, but the whole confusion kind of sounds like Donnie Darko, if Donnie's insane or Frank is actually there. Uh, everybody thought Donnie was insane, but he definitely wasn't. He, he was absolutely given powers and abilities. I mean, he was guided to certain places. He was given this kind of, he was given super strength to like rip off a statue's head. I mean... If you read between the lines, Donnie Darko clearly 
is given superhuman abilities to avert like the uh, the the what would you call it um well basically an apocalypse uh, of, of because there was a paradox he was given the ability to collapse the uh, the pocket universe Uh, Lobo says, have you ever thought about how hard it must be to run a comic store and decide how much of what to order every month? Too little, you miss maximizing profit. Too much, you waste money on dead stock. I have thought about that, and I honestly think that most comic book stores are run by comic book fans who don't necessarily have a lot of business sense. Um... Better to have too little stock and just keep up with like your, your ongoing profits and you will get lucky every once in a while because if you have too much dead stock, that just hurts you. And I think a lot of comic book stores I just see sitting on statues and stuffed animals and back issues of stuff that like their audience, their, their market just doesn't want. <sighs> from last night's comment, this is from Keith Thomas, uh, the story I mentioned with Gaia and the Demurge is from Marvel Annual Silver Surfer number two. Hmm, interesting. Don't recall that issue too clearly. I think I've read it, but I'm really not remembering any details. Lobo says, I would be so nervous running a store if there isn't much margin for error. Hmm. Oh, Chrissy says that uh, that is ba So I guess Bailey um, that you watch was streaming, uh, getting to play uh, the new Super Mario game today on Twitch. Bailey! Everybody loves Bailey! <laughs> Good for her.
Have you ever seen the Hostel movies and Cabin Fever, Eli Roth horror movies? I've seen the first Hostel and Cabin Fever. Um, don't really care too much for either of them, to be honest. Not, not really my bag. Um, trying to think if there is anything that um, Eli Roth has done that I liked. At least as a director, I mean, I liked him in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, but he's just playing a sort of bit part there. Oh, what is the prompt again? The prompt is climb. Um, I didn't really have an exceptional idea. It's, it's uh, Spider-Man. Dealing with uh, some stomach pain, so I'm a little quiet because I'm kind of in pain right now. Sorry about that. Spoderman. Spoderman is the uh, knockoff version of Spider Man. Everyone loves him. I would say that um, Spider-Man's webs are uh, the hardest part for me to get right. I like to have a uniform sort of uh, angle. Uh, anyway, is this Tom Holland Spider-Man? Not really, because he has um, the the outside uh, web shooters, and he has little pouches here, and I think he's got some weird design elements, like I think that this, the red sleeves go all the way around, and he's got like a black bar here. Um, the, the one thing that's kind of similar to uh, 
Tom Holland Spider-Man as I am making the eyes uh, kind of narrow here. Uh, so yeah, um, you know, that's how Steve Ditko used to uh, draw them a lot of the time. And I kind of like that look, but um, I was sort of trying to draw it with the idea of the Tom Holland lens lenses, but on uh, comic book Spider-Man suit to a degree. Um, I don't know if it's totally successful. Uh, the more I look at it, the more I think uh, I should have gone with a more traditional um, eye design. But, you know, it's experimenting. You don't know what you'll get until uh, you actually commit it to paper, I guess. <clears throat> Ghost Dog says that uh, Eli Roth is a very divisive filmmaker. Uh, they're super violent and trashy, but I think they're smarter movies than people give credit. Um, maybe, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not necessarily against them. I just uh, kind of come out of them feeling depressed more than, like, surprised or horrified or anything. So that's just, yeah, I'm like, man, eh, I don't really feel like feeling depressed or more depressed than I already feel so that's why I'm not too into uh, Eli Roth movies hopefully that uh, hopefully that makes sense I don't know. I guess I've always had trouble drawing Spider-Man, making him look cool. I don't know if this is really coming out all that great. I'm okay with the pose, but uh, I feel like the webs are uh, inconsistent. Hmm. Oh, Lorena Escalier says, what's your favorite Spidey costume? Very cool question, since I'm drawing Spider-Man. Um, I would say the original Steve Ditko version, as in uh, narrow eyes, uh, webbing under the arms, really skinny build. Uh, I think that that looks the best. But, um, you know, growing up, I, I really loved Todd McFarlane's uh, super weird Spider-Man and his weird poses. I liked uh, Eric Larson's. I love John Romita Jr.'s usually. Um, and I love Miles Morales. I love Spider Gwen. I think both of them have fantastic costume designs. Jesus says that it would have been better if they made the suit without the black lines. I personally like the black lines. That's interesting. I feel like they've done white lines on Spider-Man costumes in movies a bunch now, so I'm okay with uh, seeing something a little closer to the traditional design. But, um, you know, there's a lot of different versions, so I respect people liking different, different elements of each one. I remember seeing the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie in theaters when I was little. <laughs> and getting really freaked out by the bite scene. That's from Sigamix. I kept looking up in the theater ceiling. Eventually, my friend's dad had to take me home. Well, keep in mind, uh, Sam Raimi came from making horror movies, so I always expect uh, like a good jump scare or two in a, a Sam Raimi movie, personally. But I could understand how, as a kid, that might have been scary. I mean, I used to get scared at the large Marge scene in uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and that was ostensibly a... Uh, kids movie uh, 
but that used to freak me out as a little kid. I would literally like not even want to hear it because it would make me imagine Large Marge. <clears throat> what else? Uh, I missed a few things. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> Homecoming was a children's flick. Fair enough. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, Yeah, but I didn't really care for the uh, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, so I was in the mood for something different, and uh, Marvel gave it to me. What else is being asked? <clears throat> hey, TARDIS Rider, welcome. Thanks for jo joining us. Hmm. Jesus says that he thought that Homecoming was only all right. Okay. Hmm. TARDIS Rider says, Spider-Man is absolutely one of my favorites. I went to New York recently and saw an amazing Spider-Man exhibit at the Society of Illustrators Museum. I don't know about the Society of Illustrators Museum. What's that? Uh, tell, tell me about it. That's... Uh, Sounds like something I'd want to visit the next time I hit New York. Or I'll just try to remember that. Society of Illustrators Museum. Hmm. Could be cool. Ooh, tons of art by John Romita and Ditko, etc. That sounds great. Is Spider-Man Marvel's main character like Mickey Mouse for Disney? Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. I think at different times it's been different characters. I think that they love having, you know, a historical character like Captain America. I think that uh, Fantastic Four represented their true beginning as, as modern Marvel. But uh, Spider-Man's always been the most popular of their characters consistently, uh, especially in terms of licensed merchandise. So uh, I think he sort of represents almost everything that is Marvel. You know, the, the, the guy who has normal, relatable life problems. Uh, so yeah, I would say that he's there main character for sure. Mike L is in and out because he's at a wedding reception and checking this out during smoke breaks. Well, thanks for joining us. That's cool. 
<laughs> Keith has had too many gin and tonics to draw. That sounds nice. Mm, now I want some gin and tonic. Maybe I'll have some in a little bit. Um, best just to Google Society of Illustrators. It has a great permanent exhibit of magazine pulp paperback illustration like Bern Hogarth. That sounds really cool, TARDIS writer. Thanks for the uh, tip. Okay. Fantastic Four should be Marvel's main character, but no. Well, you know, um, the big problem is you have to have something that's sort of um, always well done, like is always had like the top talent and always had uh, the best um, stories and I don't think that Fantastic Four has been quite consistent enough unfortunately I think that you know Marvel uh, has uh, not quite given them the uh, the attention and nurturing they need to, to be considered the absolute best. They've had lots of great runs, don't get me wrong. And I, personally, I really, really like the Fantastic Four. Um, I just think uh, they need a little bit of work. Melvin Mel says, Hogarth and Alex Raymond. <laughs> Tardis Rider says, he's, he or she, I forget, is four beers in so far this evening. Wow, look at all of you. You're all drinking. It's, it's Thursday, not Friday, right? Wait, why are you at a wedding? Is today Friday? Jesus, I... Today's Friday. It's not Thursday. All of a sudden, I was like, wait, I'm making a mistake. It's the weekend. Wee, says Chrissy. <laughs> uh, Red Spade Comics says, sorry if this is a dumb question. I'm new to this YouTube live stream, but will this video save even after he goes offline? Like, will the recording still be in his video's library? It will. Uh, all of my uh, live streams get archived, uh, Red Spade, so you can watch them later. The, uh, the fun of, I guess, uh, being here when it's live is we can ask each other questions and interact. <clears throat> Chris, you almost made me second guess what day it was. Well, I was making myself second guess. Oh, Aldi says it's already Saturday for them. <laughs> Well, this one didn't take uh, quite as long to do as some others. I guess I'll go in and add some uh, shading detail because this, uh, for me, is kind of close to done. Eh. You know, the big problem I have is, uh, you know, I've got so many friends that are like, you know, talented professional artists that I can't help but sort of measure myself against them. And... 
it always comes up short if I do that. So All right, what else? Uh, am I going to do anything special for the last live stream? Hadn't really considered doing anything uh, special per se, but um, I'll think about it. I'm just going to change something here, folks. Uh, let's see. There. You can uh, see more of it. I was trying to zoom in while I uh, worked on some of the details. good to be around talented people. It pushes you to do better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, better than measuring myself against something bad, I suppose. I just, you know, I look at this and I'm like, eh, this is, I don't know. This is just the thing. <clears throat> Red Spade Comics says, I'm actually working on a Spidey sample script now, so I'm searching everywhere for tips and tricks to make sure this submission is the last, hopefully. They seem to like my original samples, so that's a good sign, I'd say. Wow, yeah, if Marvel liked uh, whatever you've published before, then, then that's fantastic. Congratulations. I assume, I mean, if you're going, if you're pitching Spider-Man to Marvel, you must have uh, published some stuff that some of us would know, maybe? What have, what have you uh, worked on? Curious. Nintendo says, man, I know that feel. Compared to my friends, I feel like I'm screwing around drawing stick figures. It, it, it can be so intimidating, can't it? You're like, you dudes are too talented. Stop it. You gotta stop that. Stick figures can be awesome. Anybody know Matt Fiesel, asks TARDIS Rider. No, I guess I don't know Matt Fiesel. Uh, does he do some sort of humor comic, I'm going to guess, if it involves stick figures? Red Spade says, actually, I haven't been published anything that anyone would know, but I bumped into a talent scout who told me to send some samples, so I did an Old Man Logan versus Hydra Punisher four-page story and sent. Hmm. Huh. He looked them over and put me into contact with their talent coordinator. She asked me to work a sample script. It's uh It's amazing. I've Congratulations. I've I've never heard anything like that, like Marvel being interested in in someone unpublished off of a four-page story. That's That's very unique. That's wow. I don't know what to make of that. It's, congratulations. Uh, that's really, really cool.
Shirley says, very cool, Red Spade Comics. Well, it is. It is. That's a, it's a very unique story. Anybody got any fun weekend plans ahead? Anything that's going to make me jelly? Uh, the four-page story wasn't published prior to submission. I worked them up strictly to submit to them. Thank you guys so much. Awesome Spidey, by the way. Very talented. Well, that's kind of deal. I don't know. Uh, trying to be someday, maybe. You know, no matter what, I just, I just like to draw. I mean, I'm probably too old to uh, impress anyone with my drawings, but uh, I do like to draw. So I always will, so I might as well try to get better, right? I don't know. That's my that's my logic. So I don't know who suggested it last night. Um, it, it eludes me right now, but someone was like, oh, you should give these original drawings to your uh, patrons on Patreon when Inktober is over. I was like, it's a lovely idea. I, I, so, so that's uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, so, good month for Patreon because I uh, gave them an exclusive video uh, earlier this week, and now I'm going to uh, gift them all with some original art. So, thank you again to whoever suggested that, um, and I'm sorry that I didn't make a mental note of who did because I love the idea. You're such a professional sounding man. Whenever you say stuff like make me jelly, I can't help but laugh out loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. TARDIS Rider says, Matt Fiesel did a great series of stick figure mini comics. They've been collected a few times and reprinted funny stuff. Cynical Man was a character, a main character. Matt Fiesel. All right. Appreciate the uh, the tip. That's very cool. So my little background lines really do nothing for this because this isn't perspective. That that that's just a grid. It looks terrible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually erase those uh, lines. I don't know what I was thinking when I laid those in. Should know better. Ghost Dog says, My weekend is going to consist of eating Cheetos and reading comic books. I have an interesting lifestyle. I guess so. Sigamig says, uh, You're. No, says, Any web comics you like? I like the stuff by Yuko Ota and Ananth. Hirsch. Okay, uh, not familiar with those. I don't read any web comics on the regular, but I've definitely come across some that I uh, think are insanely good. Unfortunately, I don't have them like you know memorized. I I, I have a for for a short period of time. I one of the columns I used to write on um, Robots Pajamas was Web Comic Wednesdays, and I and I listed a bunch of things that I found impressive. Uh, over there, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't memorize them. This is where, um, Having an actual art table would help because um, I'd have, you know, like a, a, a point somewhere way low on the board and I could actually do like, you know, a nice perspective grid. But um, 
I just don't have enough space to do it. I'd have to eyeball it, and I, I that that would definitely not be good. So yeah. <clears throat> have you ever worked up any sequential art? Says Red Spade Comics. Oh sure, yeah. I've I've had I had a few published uh, comics uh, that I've been hired to do. Uh, they're in bookstores and and comic bookstores. Colonial Comics one and two, Trickster, and then lots of indie stuff that I wouldn't know how to tell you where to find. Um, but sure, yeah, I've been hired to do various comics in the past. But it's not my day job or anything, obviously. Let's see. Um, Jesus says, I'm thinking that my weekend is going to consist of drawing. That's awesome, dude. Like, yeah. Just dedicate the whole weekend to drawing. See what you can come up with. There. Now I can fit the whole drawing in there. Um, so what should I do now, folks? Uh, that didn't take me too long to uh, illustrate. Like, I don't know what I'd add to that. You know? Do I love it? No. Mm. Just try to sketch a little something and see what happens. But uh, no promises it'll be any good because if there's zero planning going into this, and I like to plan. Wiki just reminded me that Scott McCloud used map fraction in his Understanding Comics book. He's mentioned as an example. Wait. He says Matt F. Um, maybe you meant Matt Feasel. I said Matt Fraction, but you mean Matt Feasel. Excuse me. Ah, Aldi, thank you. That was that was your idea. Yeah, I do like that idea quite a bit. I think that like uh, that's something my patrons might might enjoy. So yeah. Now you should have a tasty beverage. I should have a little bit of Mountain Dew. Yeah, sorry, Tardis Rider. I don't know. We talked about Matt Fraction earlier, so I saw Matt F and jumped to a conclusion. But yes, Matt Feasel. That's interesting. I, I I've read a uh, Understanding Comics several times because I've um, taught several semesters of uh, writing for comics and uh, sort of used that as one of the uh, classes. How can you be too old to draw? Says Shirley. Hmm. Not too old to draw. I love drawing. I always draw. I'm going to reach a ripe old age of uh, 72 and still be drawing. But I'm too old to break into comics like mainstream. Hmm. What to draw? Hmm. Sigmund's had an English textbook with excerpts from Understanding Comics. Nice. They announced Zachary Levi is going to play Shazam today. I saw that. That is a that is an interesting idea for for Shazam. I would never would have uh, thought of that. Wow, Ghost Dog says he's the ripe old age of uh, two thousand seven hundred sixty-two. You know, I always thought that like maybe one out of every uh, ten people doesn't die.
Uh, it's going to be the modern DC Shazam, I think, TARDIS Rider. They've been developing it forever, and I guess they're finally pulling the trigger on it. But um, The Rock backed out of being Black Adam a little while ago, so... Yeah. So this, what I'm doing right now, is um, usually what I do when I, uh, before I uh, start streaming and inking. Um, and sometimes I'll uh, decide that the sketch isn't quite right, and I'll light box it to improve it. But anyway, that's what I... <clears throat> Let's see. Hello, Karen. Welcome. Morgan, thank you for coming. Hello. What do you think of old comic serials? I really enjoy them. There's something I need to read more of. Um, because I have a lot of respect for a lot of those artists and creators, but, um, I feel like I actually don't know that part of comics history as well as I should. Uh, no, I didn't start over Ghost Dog. I just finished um, the Spider-Man, basically. So I'm uh, drawing something new since it didn't take too long. Um, I don't know how far I'll go with it, but uh, yeah. Morgan says, I'm also a huge fan of old radio shows. You know, I used to listen to some of those um, old uh, uh, things when I was a teenager. I would, um, I found a, a bunch of uh, shadow uh, uh, serials um, at the library. <laughs> Nobody uses the library anymore, huh? Um, it was great. What a discovery.
The Red Spade Comics says, uh, I had this theory that Fox and Marvel are secretly working on a deal that allows X-Men and maybe Fantastic Four into the MCU. That'd be nice, but uh, yeah, I don't have the same faith that you do. Because uh, Fox is making plenty of money with their X-Men stuff. They do not need to uh, team up with Marvel or sell the rights or anything. They're doing they're doing fine, no matter what you think of the overall product, like the X-Men movies are doing well. Now, Fantastic Four, maybe at some point they'll uh, get rid of that, but they almost might keep that just to like have negotiating power over uh, Marvel so that they can get like, you know, more rights to do like X-Men TV shows and stuff together. Uh, no, surely this isn't Donatello. I'm just sort of sketching a Wolverine. But Donatello is probably coming. You know I love him. You know me pretty well. Pretty well. Pretty, pretty, pretty well. Curtis Ryder says, if you like the Shadow radio shows, try to find some of The Avenger. They might be on Archiver. Huh. I don't know The Avenger. That's, a, that's an interesting idea. All right. Thanks for the uh, recommend. <clears throat> Am I crazy, but was there a Doctor Who radio show in the UK? Well, uh, sort of there actually has been, Morgan, and there still is. Uh, there's there's a, um audio company called Big Finish that uh, has pretty consistently produced Doctor Who radio dramas uh, forever. <laughs> and they bring back uh, old doctors and companions all the time to uh, to record new 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 stuff. So all the living doctors do uh, plenty of radio shows. Just look up Big Finish Audio and you're gonna find a ton of material if that's uh, something you're interested in. And some of them are really good actually. Hello, Sly Fly Guy. So uh, you come in after I've finished uh, a drawing of uh, Spider-Man, so I'm just sort of having fun for uh, the remainder of the hour by, by sort of starting a uh, Wolverine for the heck of it from scratch. Um, because Spider-Man didn't take me very long to draw. Thought it would take me longer. Well, you know what I should have done? I should have instead just gone back to like one of the ones that I haven't finished, like the uh, 
Hong Kong City Street or the uh, War Machine and Iron Man. Could have gone back and worked on one of those. Oh well, that's okay. Just didn't think of it. The Avenger was a character written under the Ken Robeson house name, same as Doc Savage. Had several dozen pulp novels and several seasons of radio shows. Crime fighter who could change his face as a disguise. That's a, that's cool. Huh, how about that? Interesting. love learning about some of these new things that you guys tell me about. You're so smart. You're also smart. Wicked smart. Okay, Red Spade Comics is taken off. Uh, check out the video later for sure. Well, I'm probably not going to finish this, to be honest. I'm probably just going to do some of his upper body. Because uh, I only have so much time to. But uh, thanks for joining us. Let's see. Um, Karen G says, There was a Mexican superhero that started off as a radio serial. Then he got a comic book and a movie back in the 60s. He's as good as dead now, but he was pretty popular in his day. Hmm. Sounds cool. What about um, uh, Santo, the the, the wrestler? Uh, uh, Karen is is he still super popular over there, or is that too old now? Curious about that. The name of the superhero was Kaliman. Hmm. Morgan says, uh, 
I thought I heard a 60s Who, Doctor Who radio program from the UK, someone dubbed on a tape I had years ago, but was never sure if it went back that far. Uh, I don't think they were doing radio drums that far back, but uh, it's possible, but I, I don't think so. Santo is a huge pop culture icon. He had many movies, and in the Lucha Libre world, he is still the king. Many of the teens would not be into it, but he is still relevant. Cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, I know about Santo. He's, he's pretty cool, I thought. Did you start a whole new drawing? This is why I hate missing out. Yeah, here, I'll flip back real quick because I'm not going to work much longer. But uh, Have you seen the Turkish Star Wars? Asks Morgan Moore. Um, yes, I have. It's... Uh, it's something. <laughs> so that was uh, what I drew earlier. I drew Spider-Man. And basically was like, eh, it's not perfect, but I don't think I can really do much more to it to, like, fix it. So, uh, yeah. So for the heck of it, I just started drawing something new. Uh, whole cloth. And uh, that's what I got so far. Must be uh, food time because my cat has started to talk to me. Kind of doing a 90s version of uh, Wolverine, aren't I? <laughs> well, I think you guys get where it was going. I'm probably not going to bother finishing, but, you know. There, that just sort of shows you some of my process anyway of where I start and where it goes. Nineties Wolverine is the best Wolverine. There are several jokes in the movies about the yellow suit. I think that they should have had it. Have you seen the seventies Japanese Spider-Man show? Asks Morgan. I have, and I love its theme song. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Wow, so catchy. I think I used it. Uh, 
I used that little moment of a clip the first time I teamed up with this guy, uh, Godzilla Mendoza. Um, trying to remember what we did together, though. It's not coming to me. But, uh, so yeah, this would have uh, been a uh, Wolverine. Hopefully you uh, can sort of see where it was going. Um, I'm going to take off, folks. Kind of in a little bit of pain tonight. Um, so anyway, uh, that's my little Wolverine sketch that I just did real quick uh, to show you. Some of the process, and uh, Jesus, I can never remember which way this goes. Okay. And there was the uh, the Spider-Man to represent uh, Klein. I had fun chatting with everybody tonight. Um, uh, oh, Nintendo says, have I seen Shin Godzilla yet? Yeah, I saw it, like, uh, I want to say last year in the theater. It's, uh, it's great. Uh, and Karen has a link for us. Uh, something about the 90s X-Men animated series anime. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 I've seen that. that. That is pretty cool. So everybody can feel free to click on that. Um, oh, this is fun, guys. Um, I'll, I'll do a more detailed uh, drawing next time. This one, uh, kind of quick, uh, just, just sort of the way it happened tonight. Um, not feeling tops, but uh, uh, I'll be feeling better tomorrow. So uh, I hope it was fun for you. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and I promise, like, this Sunday is a really, I, I think it's going to be a really good comic tropes. I think it's going to be one that's really interesting to a lot of people. I, I hope so. I put in a lot of research and work. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for Sunday. Keep reading comics.